Good morning to you all and welcome to our analysts briefing. Um, if I could just start by acknowledging a few people that are around. We've got our group chairman, Dev Long, is sitting here in front. Uh, we've got Mike Doro, who chairs our audit committee. And then we've got a few CITCO executives that are sitting uh, uh, within the auditorium. Uh, yesterday we published the results of CITCO International in Botswana. I think they have now been uploaded on the website. Uh, today we are talking about CITCO Limited, which effectively owns about 26-27% of uh, CITCO International. So CITCO International feeds into uh, CITCO Limited as an associate. Uh, what we will do is, uh, at the end of the presentation, for the sake of those who haven't managed to go through the website and look at the results of CITCO International, I think there are a, a few flyers that we can distribute for anyone who wants those ones, but they are uh, essentially on the website. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, you, you will get all the information that you need from there. I think the key highlight there is uh, when we are looking at the results of CITCO International, we did uh, declare a dividend of three times cover, and because that's, that's uh, in a foreign jurisdiction, that, that dividend is obviously payable in, uh, in, in U.S. cents. It can be dollars. Um, but yeah, we move on with the business of the day, and we'll start talking about CITCO Limited, and I'll ask John to start commenting on the uh, <coughs> numbers, and then I'll talk about the operations. <coughs> Thank you, Morgan. Um, so, um, first of all, the, um, with the developments that have been taking place uh, in, the, in, the, in the local uh, economy, um, change of functional currency, uh, th that's a common story uh, of everybody. Uh, however, for for the purpose of presentation, we have maintained the um, U.S. dollar as the presentation currency, uh, just for the benefit of uh, uh, most of our shareholders, uh, the majority of which, some of which are outside, uh, so that they can make uh, uh, make sense of of the numbers. Uh, just as a way of note on on the supplementary information on the flyer that you already have, how uh, we arrived at the um, income statement, basically. Uh, the 11 months we translated at one is to one. Most, uh, almost all our income during that period was at um, it was in U.S. dollars, and then the remainder, uh, the month of March, it was translated at average interbank exchange rate uh, to the dollar to arrive at the numbers. So just uh, moving on to um, the presentation. Uh, Technologies fixing me here. Okay. Right. Um, that's just a summary of um, the, the the economic environment. I don't want to preach about that. Everybody knows uh, about that. Just looking at the summary of the income statement for the full year, the business uh, uh, generated 73 million. Uh, turnover versus last year of 63, a 16% uh, growth in, in revenue. Um, on the back of um, those volumes, 15,800 metric tons for maize versus last year of 18, and then the other, uh, other, 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 other seeds, soya, wheat, uh, and other crops, 11,000 metric tons versus last year of 10,700. Just uh, looking at the other, other components of the income statement, operating profit uh, grew 11% to 23.9 million. This was last year of 21. Uh, and then um, profit before tax, 27 million. This was last year of 24. And then giving a uh, profit from continuing operations, 21.4 versus uh, last year of 17. I think in terms of the uh, underlying performance of, of the business, that's the line to look at. Uh, and then the um, profit from discontinuing operations of 69 is really out of uh, the unbundling. Uh, I will go into a bit more detail on, on that. Uh, just looking at the turnover itself, uh, the, the, the increase was largely driven by 
uh, increase in uh, soya seed sales, which, which jumped significantly better than last year, and better pricing of, uh, uh, for wheat seed, uh, in addition to price adjustments that we have had to do on maize uh, to mitigate uh, local inflation. Uh, just looking at the breakdown uh, of um, the, the volumes by, by species, you can actually see that maize still contributed a significant chunk, even uh, compared with the same period uh, prior year. <coughs> just moving on to um, the trend in volumes, which is really uh, important to see whether how we have done over the years uh, and the line for the margins. The margin, our margin, gross margin, was almost the same as uh, the previous year. But however, on uh, maize volumes, they, they declined. The other, other, uh, other crops, like I said, soya and wheat, uh, there was a significant increase if you compare with the, uh, the last four years, where the volumes have been below 5,000. <coughs> right, on the margins, like I said, there was a slight decline, but it's almost the same as the uh, pre prior period, but that is last year. Uh, apart from, um, despite the pressure of uh, increasing costs, uh, the, the, the cost of producing uh, seed itself uh, was increasing quite significantly. Other income there, uh, slight decline of 2%. These are largely uh, non-seed sales and also some uh, doubtful debt uh, recoveries. Looking at our operating costs, uh, in, during this period, which was really highly inflationary, uh, we managed to maintain our, or in, we managed to control our costs uh, to just about 7% compared to the same period uh, last year. <coughs> the finance income um, uh, increased largely because of the income end from the T bills and uh, the excess cash that we had during the period, we also invested it in. Uh, RBZ uh, savings bonds and other short term investments. The costs were not that, uh, the finance costs were not that much. And then uh, income from uh, uh, associate, this is really the contribution from the um, Citgo International business, which is 27%, 27.4% owned by uh, SCL, and also the contribution of the uh, prime seed business, which we now accounted as a JV and the cotton business, which continued to uh, perform. Like what Morgan said, we will uh, distribute the, uh, uh, the flyers for the Citgo International uh, so that we can actually see how it performed. But uh, just in, in summary, uh, the international business, uh, 10 over 60, 60 million, versus same period prior of 65. Uh, PAT, 3.7 million, um, versus uh, last year of 4.3 million. Uh, the profit before tax, just 6% below last year. On the cotton seed business, the performance uh, remained um, uh, positive, uh, although there was a slight decline, small decline in the profit, um, but they still posted uh, a reasonable profit of 2.2 million versus uh, last year of 3.1 on the, on the back of reduced uh, volumes, uh, 7,300 7, metric tons versus the same period prior year of 8.4. Uh, the local prime uh, seed vegetable business uh, still performed very well. Um, it was a significant turnaround from a previous year loss um, to a profit of a million dollars. So overall, uh, our earnings up uh, operating from continuing operations, profit to 1.5 million versus last year of 17. Uh, largely driven by the positive contribution from the Citgo International and the JV in addition to the cotton seed business and also the um, increase in the soya uh, and wheat. There's still a uh, uh, huge demand for, for those uh, crops. And then in addition to the price adjustments on the maize, which I alluded to earlier on. And then the discontinued operation is really just the fair valuation of Citgo International uh, at the partial bundling and dividend in speak distribution to the shareholders. Then moving on to the balance sheet, uh, what's important to note is that uh, following this um, uh, change in currency, there was real loss of value of, uh, on the balance sheet. You, you, you see the balance sheet uh, uh, reduced by, by half, almost three times. 
is because of that re redenomination. But just um, uh, looking at the uh, various components, um, the PPE uh, decrease of 3.9 million is a, is, a, is a result of deconsolidation of prime seed following the reclassification from subsidiary to JV and also the devaluation. Investment in associates in JV, associate investment in JV, uh, in, in Sitco International and Qton, and then the prime seed, also the book value, uh, increases as a result of fair value measurement of the retained associate investment in Sitco International. Other financial assets, those were those T bills that we had, um, the majority of them matured, and uh, the cash that we had we had to invest in the um, Arab business savings bond. But um, value preservation is, is a nightmare. Inventories, uh, much lower than um, uh, last year, 7.4 7, 7 million versus last year or 17. Low value because of currency conversion. However, higher wheat and barley uh, volumes are being held for sale in this uh, winter season. We've also had to uh, prepay uh, some of the key inputs for the for this season um, using the cash that we had so that we are ready for this uh, uh, coming season and it was also is a way of preserving value trade and other receivables uh, not very much uh, um, the government settled uh, just after year end uh, the majority declined as a result of the um, redenomination. Cash and cash equivalents, uh, same thing, but we also had to uh, buy lots of inputs in advance in preparation for, for, this, uh, for this season. We also had to use the cash uh, on the dryer project that we embarked on. Uh, I'm sure Morgan will speak more uh, on that later. Um, just uh, moving on to the other components. Um, on the external payables, um, it's still a challenge to pay uh, some of our foreign liabilities, uh, despite uh, uh, commitments that we have had to uh, have foreign currency availed, but it's still a challenge uh, to get those, um, some of those foreign obligations paid. They are still in the pipeline. I think those are the major highlights of the income statement and um, balance sheet. I will uh, hand you over to Morgan so that you can go through the operations. All right, I, I think just generally looking at the environment that we're operating in, and, and you'll see that my commentary covers the region in general, uh, bearing in mind the fact that uh, we sit co-limited owns 27% of a business that's uh, operating in the region. Uh, so I'll also try and touch on uh, developments in other countries. Uh, the environment that we operated in, uh, we, uh, we were dealing uh, with an environment where there was a widely publicized uh, uh, drought uh, before even the season arrived. And, and this generally influenced the purchase decision for the farmers in most markets. Uh, this drought uh, situation became particularly pronounced in East Africa, in markets like uh, Kenya and Tanzania, uh, where they normally receive uh, their second rains, January, February, March rains only started coming in April. So they, they came after cutoff in terms of our year and, and as a result that second season was actually lost. In terms of uh, Zimbabwe and the uh, post-election socio-economic challenges, I think we are all fairly aware of what happened. Obviously it did create a huge problem in terms of pricing. I think uh, a number of you will recall we tried to increase our selling prices and uh, those increases didn't last for long because we were summoned to come and uh, discuss them and uh, uh, we had to make some adjustments. Uh, when you look at the other markets like Nigeria, DRC, Malawi, the, the, the environment has generally been uh, a, a tense one uh, because of the elections that were taking place in those markets. Uh, in Kenya and Tanzania, the second season rains didn't come. 
before year end and uh, therefore we ended up with very little sales. We also had one logistical challenge that we faced in terms of uh, our major uh, regional seed producer, which is Zambia, where we produce most of our, of our seed for the region. Uh, because of the focus drought, the government there banned uh, grain exports. <coughs> and uh, uh, when we export seed from Zambia, we export it raw and treated uh, to the other markets so it couldn't uh, uh, cross the borders uh, from Zambia into other markets because they were perceiving it as grain. And that uh, bottleneck took a bit of time to uh, unlock. Uh, eventually, we were able to deliver the seed, but uh, we had missed part of the sales window. What we've also seen in the environment is cutthroat competition, uh, particularly in the international market, uh, with uh, some companies uh, carrying significant stocks of seed and therefore uh, looking for ways to offload them by playing the pricing game. We also generally saw the results having, uh, uh, being impacted on by the IFRIS 9 provisions, which uh, hopefully is a one-off and uh, going forwards, we've taken care of the day one issues and hopefully this should now start to smoothen out and shouldn't, start, shouldn't be uh, impact impacting on operations. Uh, in terms of uh, research, so we continue releasing new varieties. Uh, we did release three new maize uh, hybrids uh, in uh, Zimbabwe and uh, We've also uh, got 11 varieties that are at different stages of release uh, in terms of uh, making sure that they get to the market. We did release some new soybean varieties and sugar bean varieties. And uh, in the region, we've also had quite a number of releases, particularly focusing on MLND tolerant varieties in East Africa to try and uh, deal with the issues that the farmers uh, in that region uh, face. We've also started a vegetable breeding program to try and come up with uh, vegetables that are more uh, pertinent to this market. And uh, well, that's, that, that's a program that should yield the results fairly quickly. On the production side, uh, we had enough seed quantities to sell. The, the one challenge we had was a mismatch in terms of uh, yield maturities. Generally, our production is now in, in, in good shape. Uh, we are managing to produce uh, enough quantities to sell. Uh, one uh, challenge that we have been facing uh, has been bringing the seed early enough into the market. Uh, hence, the project that we've uh, started uh, this year, which is uh, constructing some uh, uh, internal uh, drying uh, mechanism. Uh, this is a big capex project. We expect it to cost us about $10 million. And, but what that will do is enable us to bring our seed uh, to the market much, much early. We'll be able to get our seed from the growers around February, and uh, that will enable the growers to use their land for other activities. So it's, it's, it's a big development uh, in terms of uh, what we are doing on the production uh, front. On the processing side, uh, the, the cob harvesting uh, technology, which I've been talking about, coming on stream February 2020. But generally, most of our processing plans are in good order. We are looking at uh, capacitating Kenya and Tanzania by building processing facilities there. We've raised the funds through the fundraising, and uh, the project is in the process of being implemented. On the sales and marketing side, the, generally the volumes were 7% down compared to prior year in Zim uh, and in the region 3% uh, lower than uh, prior year because of the drought situation which uh, we did report. Uh, looking at the major revenue contributors, we saw that maize uh, came down by 11% and winter cereals by 5%, weighed down by volume growth. Uh, volumes, uh, what happened in Zim with the price adjustments the purchasing power obviously diminished in terms of our, uh, most of our customers, the small-scale communal farmers. A lot of the seed goes into the government uh, system. Uh, that wasn't very much affected, but the seed that normally goes through the retail network, through the open market, got affected because there just wasn't the liquidity, particularly when you look at the folks in the rural areas. They just didn't have the money to buy the seed. <coughs> 
looking at our development files, so Nigeria, uh, we've sorted out the production bottlenecks that we've always had there. We are able to produce enough to seed to sell. Uh, the issue now is converting that market to our varieties in terms of uh, increasing the uptake because obviously these are people that have been uh, growing uh, farm-saved varieties or their own traditional varieties. Uh, we are now busy doing a lot of promotional work to try and switch the market over to our varieties. But we are happy that we are now able to produce in market, which has been a big challenge for us over the last few years. Uh, in uh, Ghana and other Francophone countries, we've registered a number of varieties as well. And we've also got some promising rice varieties that we are looking at uh, introducing in those markets. Uh, our export markets of Angola, uh, DRC and Mozambique. Angola, there's been some very good business that has been coming out over the last few years. Uh, the challenge has been it's by and large a yellow seed uh, maize market. We are predominantly a white uh, uh, seed market. Uh, most of the maize grown in our markets is for human consumption, whereas the maize they are growing there is by and large targeted towards stock feeds. So we have been uh, making adjustments to our project production uh, plan to make sure that we've got enough yellow varieties to service these markets. DRC, they had uh, that bitter election, but again, the sales generally we saw an upturn in terms of uh, the, uh, uh, the volumes that we sold in that market. Mozambique, we also sold, uh, sold a significant uh, quantity of seed uh, in partnership with the tobacco companies there who work with growers and uh, their growers, other than just producing tobacco, they also have to produce food crops. So we've seen some significant growth uh, in that market. <coughs> the vegetable seeds uh, in the region, they are progressing steadily. Uh, the, the turnover is growing uh, in terms of profit. They uh, are approaching break-even in terms of the Zimbabwe business. It recorded its uh, maiden profit this year. The turnover uh, grew handsomely, and it also recorded uh, a good profit. Uh, just looking at the SBUs, uh, so Zim, uh, I think you guys are the experts in terms of what has been happening on the ground, but suffice to say, uh, we've seen uh, uh, some uh, serious inflation uh, in the market in terms of seed because it's, a, it's very much a seasonal product. You can only sell it between uh, a, a certain period, between uh, a certain months. Our ability to respond to the inflation tends to get limited because once the sales window is gone and you've done the sales, there's not much you can do. And obviously it's also very much a sensitive product uh, while other products in the shops uh, quickly switched to being sold in U.S. dollars, seed was very sensitive, uh, particularly given uh, the fact that the biggest uh, customer is the government and uh, a lot of the seed is going into the government system. Uh, Zambia, we saw our local sales going up by 19%, uh, boosted by a return of the local input program. Uh, their exports were, however, affected by the logistical challenges that I alluded to earlier on in terms of uh, the grain ban that they implemented, uh, but we saw the SBU recording a decent profit. Malawi, uh, the turnover came down by 17%, and we had some serious price wars in terms of uh, uh, competitors trying to take market share. And we also, uh, the government business, uh, reduce uh, as uh, most people opted for OPVs or the cheaper varieties to try and uh, spread the wallet a little bit. So uh, instead of participating in the price game, we decided to defend value, keep stocks rather than uh, sell at the prices that the competition was selling at. And I think it puts us in good stead because you all know there was a big disaster in Malawi in terms of the floods. We think there's probably going to be a shortage going forward, and the fact that we kept some of our stocks, we think, will uh, put us in good stead. Kenya, uh, Kenya and Tanzania uh, affected big time by the drought that happened in the second part of the year, and uh, their numbers obviously got affected, uh, as you will see when you go through the Sitco International Flyer. Uh, also, the issues to do with IFRIS 9 uh, ended up impacting on the numbers. Uh, Tanzania detail. Uh, 
In terms of the CCU, uh, again, we saw quite a bit of competition because of the drought situation. Many people who were holding on to seed ended up playing a pricing game to try and move their volumes. And uh, uh, while we uh, still retained a significant portion of the business, the volumes came down because of uh, that uh, uh, price factor. Just looking at the outlook period, so uh, Zim, very difficult to predict. Obviously, uh, as management, our key focus is to try and uh, uh, preserve value. We are confident that the input schemes will continue given what we've been told, but uh, issues to do with pricing will remain a challenge, we think, particularly given the nature of the product that we deal in. We will try as much as possible to achieve a sustainable uh, selling price. Uh, the issue is if you have one big customer uh, taking a significant portion of your seed, uh, your bargaining power uh, is good to take into account the, the reality of the situation. Uh, the artificial uh, maize seed dryer that we are putting in place, uh, we think that will be a game changer for us in terms of bringing seed early to the factory and taking it to the market on time and also reducing our overall costs, uh, value chain costs. Uh, we are expecting this project to be launched in uh, February 2020 or to come on stream February 2020. The guys are currently on the ground busy constructing the artificial seed dryers. In terms of the Associate Seedco International, uh, we are expecting uh, it to bounce back as people uh, try to replenish their granaries. We know the floods that happened in Malawi, in Mozambique, and so on, and we're already seeing some significant inquiries coming through uh, as people try to uh, replenish their, their food stocks. We've got enough stocks on the ground now. We won't be having the logistical <coughs> challenges that we had last year. Uh, our new markets like Nigeria should hopefully start contributing uh, to the numbers in a, in a meaningful way. And um, uh, on the vegetable side, we expect it to continue growing. Uh, post year end, we did acquire another vegetable seed company in South Africa, Alliance Seed, uh, and th that should help us grow our business in that market uh, handsomely. Um, I think those are the issues that we wanted to highlight. Uh, obviously, this is the first time that we've presented these Zimbabwe operations on their own. We've obviously factored the 27% in the income statement in terms of uh, consolidation, but we've also done a separate analyst presentation on uh, Sitco International. Uh, in terms of uh, dividend for the international operations, we've declared a dividend in U.S. dollars, uh, payable in U.S. dollars, and for the Zim operations, uh, it will have to be payable in uh, uh, RTGS. Uh, this just uh, uh, speaks to the current situation. Uh, income and outside reward sh uh, shareholders using the, uh, the, the foreign currency. In income shared lo uh, owned locally in local currency, uh, we pay using the local currency. Thank you. Questions? Yes, John. What is the value you know, as far as your external obligations? Uh, John, do you wanna? Yeah, it's a, it's a net figure of uh, around eight million there about. Net, yeah, because they are also oil. Yeah. yeah. And like, I suspect like everyone else in town, we've got a, a letter saying it will be liquidated at one to one, but uh, <laughs> it, it, I guess it is what it is. Yes. In line with that question, for how long uh, can you wait until you liquidate that one? And I'm just considering what you were saying to say you are waiting at one is to one. Mm -hmm. Is it coming to. Are you going to realize that one is to one? And how long can you, um, creditors wait for that payment? Yeah, look, I think our balance sheet is fairly strong in terms of uh, sustaining it. We've never really written off government debt. Uh, is it coming? I do not know. I suspect maybe what will end up happening is uh, uh, payment in local currency at some rate to try and liquidate that. And then you have to look for the currency to, to liquidate your external uh, uh, obligations. But uh, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. When is it going to come? I don't know. 
we will just hope it will come. Just, just to add a bit, um, what we also do is try and uh, drive exports and any receipts that come in will then be used to liquidate some of those foreign obligations. So that's another measure that we use in addition to waiting. Yes. Uh, yes. In, in volume 10, how much is uh, being uh, acquired by the government as the major, as the major capital customer? Uh, in Zim, uh, where is DZ? In terms of yourselves, uh, Dennis Zaranika is the MD of the Zim operations. In terms of yourselves, what percentage is going to the government? It's uh, so almost a 50-50 situation. 50 uh, going to the government and 50 going to the open market. Yeah. And we will continue to be very active on the open market uh, because it's uh, very, very important that uh, you know, bulk of our sales come from the open market, but whatever government requires, we'll supply. Yes, sir. Um, just noting the maturity of your financial assets, you've been saying that you've been investing that in uh, RBZ bonds. Is that the only <coughs> avenue to invest some of this money, given that the yield is negative when compared to inflation? And my second question regarding the local sales. Have you enjoyed any flexibility uh, for the retail uh, side of uh, sales in terms of pricing, notwithstanding what the government might be saying on the price of seed sales? Uh, in terms of flexibility, so obviously uh, seed is very much uh, a, a bottom of the pyramid product when you look at the product that's going out through the, through the network. Uh, when uh, we send seed to OK to distribute, the chances of uh, us uh, saying to OK, once you sell it in US dollars, let's get a portion of those US dollars, very difficult. Uh, of course, going forwards, we've got a few models that we want to try and uh, try. But last year, uh, we tried to increase the prices to try and, uh, and lock in the value. And it was a big challenge because uh, the big whip came out and we couldn't uh, sustain those uh, prices. Yeah, just to add a bit, um, on the way to put the cash, uh, when it matured, uh, when, the, when the steel bills matured around uh, uh, September, October, there about, the only other avenue was to uh, get the um, savings bond. In addition to buying whatever inputs we could lay our hands on, you will see on the balance sheet we've got a lot of prepayments, all the inputs for this coming season. Uh, you can only do it up to a point. At the moment you try and buy inputs, the suppliers will say, hey, hang on, what price are you going to buy this product? Keep your cash. We will sell when you are ready. So you can only preserve your, your, your value up to a certain point. But we could also take tips. Where else do you think we should be investing? <laughs> Uh, any uh, more questions, yes, sir? So this is not really specific to them, but mm -hmm. it's in line with the point that you're making in the region, mm -hmm. development global. Mm -hmm. What's the appetite like for GMO stuff? How are you going to do it? Uh, well, GMOs, I think, you know, for Africa, uh, my view has always been it's, it's a technology whose uh, time has not yet really come. Uh, because we've got varieties that do very well at the moment without the technology and they cost less, they are much more cheaper uh, for the, for the small-scale communal farmer uh, to ask him to buy GMOs uh, at probably five, six times the price of what we are selling seed at currently and he is struggling to sell, to buy that seed at the current price. I don't think uh, it, it's a winner in any way. Uh, you'll find that in most markets where they are doing GMOs, it's large-scale commercial farmers who are doing that. And those ones have got a much better chance of benefiting from the, from the advantages that GMOs give. Because they've already reached to the uh, top of their potential in terms of yield, uh, potential of seed, in terms of agronomy, in terms of uh, everything that they have to do on the farm. And they are looking for an in incremental element, which is where the technology does come in. But if you have a variety that produces 15 tons per hectare and a guy is getting less than a ton per hectare, we would rather he works on getting 15 tons before he adds 
GMOs so that he now gets 17 tons per hectare. Because if you give him the GMOs, you will probably move from a, a half a ton to a ton, but at five times, six times uh, the cost of doing that. And also that technology has got its own major challenges because uh, uh, when you are doing GMOs, for example, you need what are called uh, refuge crops. So you don't just plant the GMO on its own. You need to be planting other crops that the insects that, that GMO is protecting against can still feed on. If you don't do that, the insects become resistant and they start eating the GMO material. So getting those refugees and the GMO management in a communal setup, I think is something that's going to take quite a bit of time before we start seeing that uh, uh, taking hold in this market. Uh, so, so, so yes, it's a good technology for the big commercial farmers, but I think, as you know, 90% of the maize, not of the Limpopo, is grown by small-scale communal farmers. Uh, is probably technology that still has got some way. And, and I might add, in Europe, most countries in Europe, they don't allow GMOs as yet. Uh, it's by and large uh, America versus uh, Europe in terms of GMOs. So uh, this is where we are. Okay. I just want to know, on, on your slide, you indicated a movement of PPE attributed to deconsolidation and current devaluation. Mm -hmm. I just want to know the, the amounts in each. Category. Then lastly, I didn't see any, any comment on uh, the audit opinion where this financial support that is yet and what's the audit opinion? Well, it's, I didn't see the audit around. Is the audit around actually? Well, but anyway, look, like everyone else uh, in the country, uh, we are getting the same opinion that almost every uh, player in the country is getting. I think the last time I checked, the only institution that hadn't gotten a qualified opinion in Zimbabwe was Chapman Golf Club. And, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and even then, the auditors were querying uh, whether that was a correct opinion or not. So we are receiving the same long opinion that everyone else is receiving. I think it is what it is. We, uh, we have to move on. So any further questions? And, and you guys, I know you, you hold uh, positions in many counters. You, uh, you're not volunteering any tricks in terms of how we should, uh, how we sh how we should uh, in invest uh, the excess cash and so on. <laughs> That's, uh, um, maybe if, if we are done for questions, I'll just ask our group chairman to say one or two words, uh, and, and, and then we can mix and mingle, have some drinks, and see and, 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 and chat. Thanks, Morgan. Thank you. I think all that I would like to say is that, uh, notwithstanding the very difficult uh, environment that we've been operating here, um, in Zimbabwe in particular, um, the business is still in rude good health. Um, we have a, a robust, uh, sustainable, credible, strategic plan. Um, we continue to invest. Uh, we have outstanding people. Uh, this is a technology business. Um, uh, we are increasingly diversifying not only our sovereign risk, but also the product uh, concentration risk, not only through the introduction of new varieties and so on, um, in things like the, the three series, the you know, having better uh, moisture tolerance and so on, but uh, uh, rice, sorghum, these sorts of things, all go to our you know, long-term commitment. Um, and in that regard, I'd also mention our, our relationship with, uh, uh, with Lima Crane, who are invested in, uh, uh, in Seedco International, uh, but with whom we have a, a very significant um, uh, technology uh, agreement, a technical agreement, a significant exchange of, uh, of ideas. Uh, we benefit from their, uh, from their experience from their worldwide uh, positioning. Um, and they are a good example of investors who come with what I call patient capital. So they do not suffer from this dreadful disease called quarteritis. Um, they're here for the long haul. Um, as indeed I hope uh, investors represented in this room are uh, with us as well. So that increasing diversification, uh, the, the, the growth of, of the vegetable seed business and so on, all of those things I think point to, uh, uh, to our commitment um, to grow and develop uh, this business. Yeah, this year we've suffered from a whole lot of things, um, not only the, the crazy nomics, 
uh, the currency story um, uh, drought affected the RTCZ impact of this country and also southern Zambia. Um, but we are here for the long haul. Uh, we're looking wherever we can, as you heard uh, from, from Morgan and John, uh, at the value storage side of things. We've got uh, reasonable levels of, of, of carryover stocks. Uh, I think we're pretty assured in terms of what we can sell this year. Yes, there will be question marks about what prices. Um, but I think from a, from a value preservation point of view, um, we're in good shape and, and, and we're nimble and can react to the opportunities that are clearly, clearly out there. So um, we are paying a dividend. Um, I'd like to think that's well received. Um, well, a whole heap of counters off. Uh, because we believe that it's important to, uh, to recognize um, and to reward um, investors who entrust us um, with, uh, with that risk capital. So uh, thank you all very much for your support and uh, be assured of, uh, of ours uh, in, in your best interests. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll have some uh, snacks and drinks outside and we can answer any questions. And, and John will circulate the few flyers that he has of uh, Citco International. Thank you.